how many people are, are watching too. It's probably zero to start with because we didn't really announce. 15 minutes into it, you're live. <laughs> so nobody, oh, no, no, nobody's found us yet, and that's okay. And we can delete out this part of it after the fact. But uh, for the people who are coming, uh, we do want to, and I'm pretty sure I made it public, let them know that this is Dr. Mark Vaughn with Auburn Medical Group. With you, you can use whatever name you want. You can be anonymous. I don't need to be anonymous. Okay. Mike. Mike has has significant tendonitis in both shoulders. Sometimes this happens where we'll do a shot in both shoulders at the same visit. It's not all that common, but it does happen. And questions of live viewers are welcome. Mm -hmm. And comments. 24. Okay, so now it's here. 24 guests watching. There we go. Bianca says hi. Oh, Bianca's here. Okay, very good. Mm -hmm. Bianca's from Canada. Wait. No. Bianca's from the UK. I'm sorry. There it is. Yeah, she'll, she'll correct us. She always <laughs> lets us know for sure where we are. Angie so, says hi as well. Who? Angie Martina. Oh, okay. I, I don't recognize her name, although she may have been with us before. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mike, should we show them what, what uh, happens when we do your shoulder exam? Sure. Okay, so let, let's show you a little bit what happens to Mike's shoulders here. So, one of the things we noticed was this limitation of forward flexion. How far can you go? I could go up to about here before it gets starts getting really painful. Okay, whereas normal would be, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, okay, so they, they mm -hmm. actually saw that there. Uh, and then we also found that you were uh, having pain with the empty can test. Yes. You can go ahead and go a little bit more to the sides. And that's where I have you lift up my hand, I guess my hands, and you don't have to hurt yourself again. Okay. But it's happening in both arms, worse on the right. Worse on the right, You're yeah. going on for how long? Uh, a couple of years. But worse here lately, or it, um, you just had so many other things? No, to it's, it's, not, it's not worse, but uh, after I get a cortisone shot after a few months, the pain comes back again. So you've had this before. Yes. When's the last time we did it? It was over four months ago. About four months ago. About four months ago. So to get a really good position for the injection, I guess I should show them what I showed you earlier about what's actually going on anatomically inside of here. Mm -hmm. So inside of the shoulder, you have this bone here, the acromion is on top. You have the humerus under. So it's something like this. And when the arm goes out like this, uh, or, or even up like this, you've got this movement of the humerus rotating inside of the space. And this is a pretty good way of showing it. My knuckle gets really close to the acromion there. And that tendon, just from some kind of use has gotten swollen, so it's big, and it's rubbing against that bone. It's trapped between bone, and that hurts, and it's injuring to the tendon. Mm -hmm. With the cortisone, we can, there's some cortisone inside of there, I don't know if it's focusing on it or not. With the cortisone, we can get that tendon uh, swelling to shrink so it can move inside of that space without being compressed or impinged. And Angie had a quick question. What's the difference between tendonitis and frozen shoulder? So frozen shoulder is where uh, you've had so much scarring that you have very limited range of motion. Not necessarily painful, but just, um, I'm sorry, not <laughs> the word escapes me, uh, <laughs> for, for that um, fibrosis that's occurring. Mm -hmm. And the way to get out of frozen shoulder is to get range of motion mm -hmm. and sometimes it can be so bad they have to do it in the operating room that they put a person out oh, yeah. to move their arm full range of motion to get that motion back it happens with disuse so something like this can actually lead to a frozen shoulder mm -hmm. whereas the tendonitis is like what i was describing the inflammation of the tendon or bursitis uh, versus a, t a structure near the tendon uh, inhibits movement in the same ways so, I just learned something. I had never heard of frozen shoulder before. Yeah, frozen yeah. shoulder. <laughs> People will huh. get it when they don't when they have something bothering them in the shoulder, so they yeah. don't use it. Oh, I see. Then it yeah, it, it, it'll get so bad. Or adhesive capsulitis is another term for mm. it. For us to get really good view and, and get good lighting for this, can I have you turn and face that way for this shoulder? And to open up that shoulder joint, again, we want it. What we're going to do is have them internally rotate, which is going to do this. It's going to give us more space in, in, in between the bones. Mm -hmm. So to internally rotate, we'll just have you go like that. 
This is X marks the spot. I'll show you again. Um, this is what we're pointing at when we put the needle in. This little dot I put at his AC joint, and we touch the chromium here, the very tip of it. It kind of comes to a corner here. We feel that, and then let our finger drop under it, and it goes a little medial when that happens. So I put an X there in that spot. Needle goes there, points to up here. This is ethyl chloride. It it makes the skin cold, and sort of numbs it up. So I'm going to do this. Uh, before I do this, let me check, let me look back to your view of it. Yeah, you can get even, get even closer if you want. Okay. Uh, here we go. You ready, Mike? Ready. Notice I do it just barely above the X mm -hmm. so that the skin on the X gets this whitish frost on it. You can cause frostbite with this stuff, so you, you do need to be a little careful. So that freezes it up so it doesn't hurt quite as much. Yeah. When the needle goes in. When the needle goes in. Okay. Must be some needle. So when we put that needle in, you're not necessarily going to feel it. Can you tell it was in? Can you tell we're done? I can tell you. Yeah. Could you tell when we were doing it? Yeah, but it didn't hurt. Oh, okay. All right. Let's do another one. That was so much fun. Okay. Let's all say, say, uh, change place, so I'll have you sit facing this way. And it's a very similar procedure. Have your uh, left arm across. There you go. Just like that. And let me get this ready. Okay, this would be a good time to take questions if there are any. Um, well, Angie said that she actually has frozen shoulders. Oh. Connected again, yeah. Okay, so what we'll have Mike do is even turn even more this way mm -hmm. so that we don't disconnect from the internet again. Perfect. How's that? Uh, but I do, mm -hmm. I am right handed, so we will have to have you here. Hopefully, it'll right stay. All right. So far, so Shoulder good. number two. Glad we caught that before we started. Same procedure. T yeah, your arm's over. Okay, ready? Ready. And Angie's asking me. How many shoulder injections do you recommend a person can have a year? No more than three, but if you're having that many, <laughs> uh, may want to be referred to an orthopedic surgeon or have some imaging. Yeah, Bianca says. One going okay? Going fine. So one of the things I notice is how easily the injection goes. If I was to be meeting resistance, that would mean I was in a tendon, most likely. Uh, and you shouldn't hit bone. Um, sometimes when people are first learning how to do it, they hit bone. Now, the show is not over. So those who were with us from the very beginning will remember how limited your range of motion was and how you winced when you lifted your arm up. Lift up that arm now, the same way, or no, the other one. Oh my God. You like that? Oh, yeah. What a difference. <laughs> I love that. That's why I love these procedures. To take a person from hurting to the pain's gone. That quickly. Are you ready to try this one? Sure. All right, go ahead. Wow. What do you think of that? I, I love it. <laughs> yeah, I wanna, I'll come back. <laughs> I'm trying to remember if your limitation was the forward. Or, yeah, it was the forward. It was the flexion. Yeah. It was the flexion. That was, yeah. And then the. Um, the Do you think we might have strength with that? Let's try it. So push my hand away. Oh my goodness, he has strength. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, our audience didn't see it because we didn't repeat the, or this test after we started the camera. Mm -hmm. But when his hand was back here and I had to push against it, there was no force at all. He could not move my hand at all. Mm -hmm. And now you've got. Uh, kind of felt like full strength to me. Yeah, it feels like full strength to me too. So, huh. Let me get some more of that off. So, are there any other questions from the audience? Um, Peggy said, my doctor gave me an injection in front and back of shoulder. Okay, so, uh, locations of injection. We did the posterior approach. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also get to the same space from the front. Mm -hmm. I was taught to do it from behind. There's a nice big space there. 
There's also a pretty good place to approach it from the front. I just wasn't trained mm -hmm. in that technique. Uh, I am aware of it. And if I had a patient that for some reason I couldn't do it here, I, I would go to a textbook, reference the landmarks thoroughly, and, and go ahead and, and do it. And that way a patient doesn't have to see the needle. And that, yeah, patient doesn't have to see the needle this way. Um, I just have so much experience doing it from the posterior or the back approach that I, I would I would have no reason to ever do it from the front. I mean, we just... Hey, if I'm ever in here and you got to get out the book, I'm going to start to get worried. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's, that's the effect it has on patients when you... <laughs> that's right. I'm looking for a Band-Aid. And... Wait, is that... No, that's not a Band-Aid. <laughs> Because there's a little spot. Well, we'll get we'll we'll sign off and then we'll get a little band aid for you. Thank you Bill. So that was okay for you. You bet. That was great. Well, thank you, Mike. Appreciate you. And uh, we do want to let people know that occasionally we'll just surprisingly do live procedures without much warning. So if you want to be able to see that, you have to be both subscribed to the channel and hit the bell icon and enable enable notifications on YouTube for it. Um, any other last minute things from our audience? No, nope. uh, Real Ruler just said Dr. Vaughn is the book. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Real Ruler 2112, thank you. We appreciate you being a part of the channel. And uh, do you have any anything you wanted to promote or uh, say or words? If you're looking for a great doctor, go to Auburn Medical Group. <laughs> thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. That would be 20 <laughs> bucks. <That's right. laughs> so until next time, Dr. Mark Vaughn telling you to stay in good health.